I think we're in the camera. Good afternoon, folks. We are back with the part three of our restoration or the repair, rolling repair of Clay's 450 SEL. And I say hi, Clay. Hi, 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 hi. YouTube world or whoever valued uh, subscribers and viewers, customers. Um, we're going to do one thing is we have a problem which we're going to show you in a minute with the valves on one and five and we have a little jump at the top that center at the zero degree mark because one of the valves intake valves is open and we're going to show you what we're going to do here that's pretty much what we're going to be working on and we changed already one guide rail and we're going to do the other guide rail here on the camera so you can see it it's going to be the broken one and we can show you what you have to watch out for when you take rolling out. okay close up we're rolling so the issue what we have found out now is the car set for many many years in texas right texas in texas and um that was a company car some company owned it they did their vip pickup in it and then it went probably in some barn or in some garage and it said someone tried to work on this many years ago and that genius who worked on this thing set the engine to top that center zero degree mark when they were working on it and it sat there i would say probably for a decade what this did is it closed these here these two valves and this valve here is now stuck open normally you would say well why is it stuck open well wouldn't it have to be fully uh, compressed in order to you know do anything or get stuck in this case this valve didn't close anymore to begin with and so it was open when they were working on last and that was the indication that they were trying to fix something but they basically gave up the i have the compression uh with a leakage tester here we turned the compressor off already this is this unit here and um, basically you hook this up here let me just show you this and you hook the hose up is it in the picture mm -hmm. yeah to your spark plug input spark plug thread and then you pressurize it and there's a calibration mark and i have a little tool here where you calibrate this and this is the little calibration tool and that goes in here and then you adjust this here to 20 percent let me see if we have any air left in the compressor. I, I think I'll turn it off. Yeah, it's zero now. It won't be enough. This thing was running on us and we turned it off because you can't really make a video with it. Anyway, you adjust this with this tool here. You plug this in and you go to the calibration mark. And then you just switch over to your hose to the cylinder you're testing. And then you will see what your leakage is. The leakage here, now this is normally done on a hot engine. Uh, when the engine is hot not on a cold engine we did this just to find out do we have any stuck valves it is not if they're closing 100 percent right at this point we need to figure out if we have stuck valves and here we have a leakage indication with wood around about i would say 28 percent 26 percent it was a little bit above cal so it was around 26 28 percent leakage over on the other side, we were between 80 to 60% leakage, and you could hear the air and feel the air coming right out of the intake. So we know that the intake valve is stuck open in the open position. What we're gonna do about this now, I don't know yet. I have to think about this. The task at the moment is for us to take out the broken guide rails. We have new and seal. We got one already installed on this side. And I will be showing you this here in a minute on how to take the broken one out to see where the other parts are, if there's anything else missing in there. Um, and that will be then the next segment. This way we can rotate the engine through again. Then we're going to lower one and five down to the bottom and we're going to put the bore scope in there to see what the top of the pistons on each side uh, is going to look like it. And that will be the next segment then. So first taking this out, and then we're going to rotate the engine around to go one and five to the bottom, which is the 180 degree mark. That's when they're going to be at the bottom. 
and then we can take a look at the top of the picture of the pistons with the borescope. Stop you. Rolling. Okay, so we're back here. <laughs> Labor. Clay and I, we, we did this here. We got now all the, the guides out, the old guides, and you can see this one is the broken one here. And uh, I have the two bound pullers for this, for the pins, the small one and the large one. And we tried the big one, but we think the smaller one works better. Because on the left-hand side of the, uh, let's see that it's not gonna fall down here. On these pins here, never mind our little plastic bags here, that's our temporary cover. On these two here, the big tool has nowhere to properly push against the engine block or the cylinder head block, basically. So the small one will sit right in this cavity here. And with this, this is actually the better tool. We didn't show you this, but you can see it. We have these ones here not fully pushed in because we got the wrong rail here for this side. So Clay is gonna order the correct one. We got the old one out to uh, take a look at the part number. We needed the part number for it. And we got our chain back in. So we have now the new rail in here and here and these are the swag ones w no swags so they're the better ones and that used to be the oem part for mercedes-benz on those and when we so when we get this rail here we will just pull them out we that's why we didn't push them all the way back in and get the correct rail in and then we hopefully have the line or two for our uh, tensioner rail here now, what we found out is, since we did the test here for the um, leakage, which we showed you earlier, is that we have 80% uh, loss of uh, or leakage here. And we got into here, and when you go into this hole, you can basically see the valve head off it, and it is full with, um, what do you call it? Carbon. Carbon carbon deposits then we rotated the engine over down to the 100 uh, to the uh, 180 degree mark so both pistons one and five were down and we went in with the bore scope and what we found is piston ring marks on the uh, cylinders on both sides but especially here on the first one and that is exactly at the top that center where the upper piston mark left or the upper piston ring left a mark and that's where we're hanging up so what we did is we filled up all eight cylinders with mystery marvel oil correct right through the spark plug holes and now what uh, we're gonna try to do is to get rid of the carbon without introducing any type of chemical which is gonna dissolve oil you know uh, a, a degreaser type uh, thing is so the only thing you can use is WD-40 and that works so and so so what we're going to do what I told uh, Clay to do here next week is to spray in and soak the valves completely with WD-40 all eight of them on the intake side and to fill up the cylinders every day with about 10 15 20 milliliters of marvory mystery oil and then hand crank the engine over until we got the engine completely moving freely and smoothly rotating through and this is so typical the oh and then we took out the two elements here the hydraulic compensating elements and this is how much cut we got in here. You can see this. This is how slouched up the engine is. And this is typical for an engine which sat for 10 plus years, or the car sat for 10 plus years. And this is what we think is what happened is the owner, the previous owner in Texas, bought this car from somewhere, it sat for a long time. They looked at it and uh, they stopped working on it then. And then one day, they decided to put it up for sale. So what we're going to do is this one here, that uh, uh, hydraulic compensating element is freely moving 
we're going to get the oil out we're going to press it carefully out and then we're going to uh, put probably what is it paint thinner or what was it you have there lacquer thinner lacquer thinner and we're going to clear out any type of dirt inside the uh, compensating elements and then we're going to uh, flush them out with uh, isopropyl alcohol 99.9% to get rid of all the lacquer thinner so it is not going to destroy the new oil when we put this in um, we anticipate that we're going to have to do at least two or three oil change very rapidly on this engine once we get the engine to crank over and build up oil pressure and then we do the first oil change right after this to get the stuff out and then with the second oil change in there we're going to start the engine up and probably run 100 miles or so with it and do then do another oil change just to get all of this stuff here dissolved and out of the system. Um, these engines, they need an oil change every 3,000 miles or every six months. So if you set, if you buy a car which set, I would say for anything longer than two years, these are the issues you're gonna encounter. Stuck, hydraulic compensating elements, you're gonna have piston ring marks on your sleeve in the position where the thing was uh, set at when it was parked or you know, the last time it ran and those things you have to deal with before you ever start the engine these cars do not lend themselves or these engines do not lend themselves for the um, all entertaining <coughs> and uh, for amusement Thing, theme of will it run no it won't <laughs> that's the thing is this engine uh, there's no compression right now on these cylinders the way with the carbon built up on both sides of these valves and with 80% leakage we cannot get even one or five psi with the valves closed in the position right now since we took the arms out the rocker arms out we can't even get a five psi pressure into the cylinder at this point until we have dealt with the carbon built up on this to get some of it resolved. The carbon built up on piston and valves is typical for these engines. These are 230 horsepower engines and this car since it came from Texas and it was driven like as a limousine saw very little highway traffic, mostly city traffic. And if these car engines are not loaded, say like where they really have to put out 180, 200 horsepower, they build up carbon. This is why that is so important that you drive these cars at least once a month, if not twice a month, on the highway at 70 miles an hour, that they get at least some kind of movement going. Otherwise, you're gonna have everything clogged up with carbon and your oil and everything else is gonna look like this. Um, the best thing would have been if they would have done a complete flush on the engine when they parked it, when they basically set it and they stopped working on it, but they did, they left the oil in it. We will open up the oil pan because the one part from our uh, guide rail, the lower part of this here, let me show you this here, fell into the oil pan you can see this the other part this part here and then this one you said fell in three pieces basically this one was still on there this one we pulled out and this part here this what goes around here this part is laying in the oil pan at this point so we have to open up the oil pan and take off the oil strainer to see if this got already into the oil strainer or if we find it in the oil pan and that oil strainer is rubber and that rubber is going to be so hard we're going to show this in the video that you need a hammer because that rubber will turn into plastic into hard plastic and you have to use a hammer to actually break it to get it off and then you can put a new one on there it's like a difference like day and night and this is basically how far we got today and uh we did this what we normally don't do is to put bags in here to cover this up since the car's parked outside. And we're gonna see that we're gonna close this engine off here within the next week and a half to two weeks. 
and by that time we should have the uh, hydraulic compensating elements uh, cleaned out and working properly and can check them and we hopefully have some reduction in carbon. Some of this carbon is going to blow off when we're able to actually crank the car over with the starter. Uh, you know, when there's really movement up there, we can get the RPM up to about 350, 400 RPM, and we get the oil pressure built up and all of that stuff. Some of this will wear itself out, but until we get to this, this is an engine which has to be nurtured back to life. This is not something where you just can see that you get ignition and fuel and the engine runs. The engine is, is set for too long and that takes additional steps for us now to actually clear this all up and get it into a condition where we actually safely can start the car. And next week, hopefully we're gonna have the new chain. Uh, we will video that too to put the chain in. I said earlier we would show on how to do the the tensioners, but we got into this and we really needed to figure out what the deal was with our valves here and why we had the leakage so we didn't video this. We were just trying to get these in to get the old brittle ones out so we can actually safely rotate the engine by hand right now with the chain actually attached to the whole system, but no rocker arms. So any type of resistance we're feeling now is all the piston moving up and down in the sleeves. And I think that covers it for today, no? I would say, Mr. Clay, you yeah. wanna say anything? I just wanna say this is really a project and I'm learning a lot. Yeah. Even though if you tested me right now, I still would not get it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I guess that concludes our video for today. And we will be checking next week. We will check in next week. We basically have the basics here covered now of what we got, what we got to deal with. For us, the question was that we have to pull the cylinder heads off. Do we need to have to take a look at this? How bad is it? This is not yet out of the question or out of the possibility. It depends on how well we can dissolve some of this um, carbon deposit on the valves to get the uh, engine to build up some compression when we actually crank them over by hand you should see at least uh, 20 to 50 psi if you don't rotate this through by hand without having the rocker arms in and we are getting zero at this point so we will keep you updated on this if you have ever dealt with an engine like this and the issue uh, with heavy carbon deposits let us know in the comments on how you dealt with it without taking the cylinder heads off. And I guess that concludes it for today. You have a nice evening. We're out.